Glad to have you back on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today moves to Imo State, where the Imo State uh, uh, Speaker has declared the seat of uh, Kenneth, uh, sorry, Tochi Okereke uh, vacant. He's the uh, lawmaker representing Ngokpala State constituency in the Imo State House of Assembly. Um, but of course, it has been declared vacant for very, very interesting reasons, and it's uh, stated uh, that uh, he has been absent for more than one-third of the times that the House has uh, sat since 2019. We're going to be speaking this morning with uh, uh, Mr. Mark Adebayo, who's joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Mr. Adebayo. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning, and uh, compliments of the citizens uh, to all viewers of Plus TV Africa, the fans of Plus TV Africa worldwide. Thank you very and, uh, much. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here and to be with the father and mother Christmas in the studio over there. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so let's let's get into it. This is a very interesting story, mostly because you know there's there's very likely going to be different angles to the reasons uh, he has uh, been suspended or his seat has been declared vacant. Uh, there's a part where some people are insinuating it's because he has not. Um, um, agreed to defect from the PDP to the APC. But it's also very interesting, from the clerk of the Imo State House of Assembly, it says that he has attended sittings just 43 times. In 2019, he attended 29 times, 2020, 14 times, and in 2021, he has not attended sitting at all. So let's start with that. Is that in any way normal for State House of Assembly members, and maybe also in the National Assembly, to simply attend when they feel like it. No, no, no. That that that, that is not that is not the normal practice. Uh, that, that is not the constitution. The constitution is very clear about the number of times that a lawmaker must attend plenary. You know, the constitution is very clear about that. Uh, if you do not attend for so so number of times, then your seat can be declared vacant. That is. But uh, maybe there are other reasons why this one happened. We may not. Know. If truly the lawmaker has not attended up to the, the required number of time that the constitution stipulates then even if he was removed for political reasons he has played into their hands because if they have that evidence that he did not attend a num uh, enough number of plenary then they have the they have the right to to, to exercise the uh constitutional provision of uh, suspending him or removing him or declaring him a significant you see in this country the people who govern over us, who rule over us, do not take the issues, the business of government seriously. They don't take it seriously. It, it happens in the National Assembly. Even some of them who attend the constitutionally required number of times, you see many of them sleeping. They will just sleep. A person who sleeps half the time is in the Assembly. Is this is equal to the person who is, who is absent? I think a law, I think our organization will send an amendment to that law that if you come and you are sleeping, you shall be deemed to be absent from plenary. I think, I think that is what uh, we should do. The thing is that if the guy has not attended, has not attended up to one third as has been alleged, of the time of plenary, then is due for is due for dismissal from the from the assembly. It happens at the state level. It happens at the national level. You know, they, they just they, they just abandon. When really they get elected, they do not take. Unlike Europe and the Americas, where the business of government is taken seriously, is taken seriously. <coughs> Here in this in this side in this line, people just do as they like. They just they don't go for plenary. They, they instead of then going doing that, they will go for one occasion or one or the other or be attending to private. Uh, businesses. It is uncalled for, it is unacceptable, it is reprehensible. If you refuse to cross carpet from, AP, uh, from PDP to, uh, to APC, if I were he, I would be the one to, to ensure that they don't have any reason to remove me. So he, he wasn't being smart. He wasn't, he wasn't, we should not even look for any uh, flimsy excuses for him. If he was removed for political reasons, it was the cause of it. If it is proven that truly he has not, he has not attended up to the constitutionally stipulated periods of time, then uh, the, 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 the leadership of the House you know, ha have the right to, to, to take disciplinary action against him. That is it. That is my take on that. Okay, but um, let's also look at uh, the constitutionality and the fact that you're talking about right now. Do you think that um, 
you know, because I remember a time where Femi Fallon, or human rights a lawyer, said that it was unconstitutional for any legislative member to remove you know, another or suspend another member. The House does not have that right. Uh, that's because they were elected. And so it would only be a court of competent jurisdiction or um, you have the constituents actually approaching that. And we have seen the cases that he had handled, uh, that of uh, Dino Melaye and uh, amongst other cases in Bauchi in 2021. So do you think that they have a right to suspend him? Is it constitutional for that to happen? Uh, with due respect to, to the respected uh, uh, legal luminary, I, I want to, my own, view is the fact that if the constitution I, I cannot lay my hands on the i'm not a lawyer on the uh, provision of the constitution uh, with, uh, with regard to that but if the constitution stipulates and i believe that that in the constitution that you, you have to attend a plenary for a, a number of times you know and if that is the constitution it does not matter the legal opinion of anybody it, it, the constitution is supreme over everybody. And of course, we must not encourage all this uh, truancy or discipline in, in the business of governance. We should, we should not encourage it. I believe that discipline for any lawmaker that refuses to go to plenary for a, for a number of times as stipulated in the constitution. You understand me? So um, if, if you now play into the hands of the people that are looking for ways to remove you before, then that is your fault. That is your fault. Yeah, well. If he was removed for political rather than constitutional reasons, he, he probably played to their hands. If I were he, I would not, I would not, I would not give them any opportunity to find anything to hang on my neck in order to remove me. You know, Nigerian politics. You see, uh, there's a lot of uh, pitfalls and and, uh, and portals along the way, and you you just have to know how to maneuver and manage yourself. Mr. So Debayo, we, we should important? not give excuse. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, just to, you can go on, but I just wanted to ask, is it important to, you know, clarify the difference between suspending a lawmaker and declaring his seat vacant? Because that's what the papers are reporting, that his seat has been declared vacant. Um, and that's where, um, you know, um, uh, senior advocate uh, Femi Falano may, um, or what, you know, my colleague here saying about uh, Femi Falano may also, you know, uh, play here. Um, they may not have the right to declare a seat vacant, but he can be suspended. I'm not sure if it's important to clarify what exactly has happened here. Uh, well, it's very important to clarify because if his uh, if his seat if you if his seat has been declared vacant, I thought the normal process would be that to to suspend him, and then you now carry out an investigation. You set up a committee. It, it should not be done by fiat. Not, it should not be done by the fiat of the speaker. You know. And we all of us know that uh, most of the legislative houses in our in our in the states, most of the legislators are more or less like house boys of the governors. So in the order order from the governor, the governors operate and uh, operate or uh, the, the, the control the, well, substantially most of the state uh, houses of assembly. On a very few occasions that you have independent-minded lawmakers, and if the speaker is becoming trying to to prove stubborn and become independent, you see that one way or other, the members of the house will remove him and put somebody who is amenable to the governor's wishes and whims. So that is what happens. I believe it should, the suspension should come. Then there will be an investigation, a, a, a committee to be set up to investigate it, and he will be present to defend himself. Then after that, you follow, due, you follow the due process of law. You follow the due process of law whatsoever. Whether, because everybody is innocent until proven otherwise. But without investigation, you cannot buy fiat. Remove and declare somebody's uh, seat uh, vacant. You know, uh, the, the, this the, the issue of uh, you know the way we operate our presidential system is so funny that uh, people just believe that they can exercise whatever authority they have with impunity. The law the lawmaker that refuses to go to plenary is operating under impunity. The people that remove people illegally and unconstitutionally they operate with impunity. In that state, when he, he had Yoha. Was governor. He came in as governor. What did he do? He immediately dissolved all the elected local councils of that state, illegally and unconstitutionally. And the Supreme Court has ruled that no governor has the authority to dissolve or remove elected council members. He did it affected my party. And now, what happened to him? Then there was there was Kama. And the Kama came and he was also illegally and we believe unconstitutionally removed as governor of Imo State. What goes around comes around. 
So we have to, we should stop playing politics with our democracy and the lives of our people. We have to do things constitutionally. We have to do things procedurally. We have to do things uh, following, you know, lay down rules and procedures so that we do not, you know, accident. We do not accident our democracy. It is important. It is not about sentiment. It's not about uh, party loyalty or party uh, alliance or whatever. It is important for everybody. If you are elected a lawmaker to represent your own people, to represent your local government, to represent your constituency, friend, you've got to go there and do the work for which you have been elected. You apply for the job. You campaign for the job. You you you, you, you sought their vote. You are voted for. And then... You got into the house. Then, where are you when other people are determining the fate of their constituents? That so, is very, very important. But also, there must be uh, the, the, the assembly at the national and state level, there must be the clear dependence of separation of powers constitutionally operated so that there is not this, uh, this confusion about executive interference in the affairs of the legislative assembly. One of the reasons why the president I'm not a great fan of the president. One of the reasons why he signed an executive order, you know, granting the independence of local government, independence of the judiciary, and I think that there must be independence for the parliament itself. All right. So, so now that um, you know, of course, uh, this suspension, um, these members have been suspended. It therefore means that they do not have a representation. I mean, their constituent is not represented. What happens? Is there going to be an election? I mean, what would happen to the interests of these persons? Uh, you know, I, I do believe that the affected lawmaker would uh, will not take it lying low. He too will probably approach the courts to set uh, the record streets. And uh, that's the best option he has. For, uh, for as long as he's uh, suspended, his uh, constituents are not represented at the House of Assembly. And that is very, uh, that is not good enough for for, 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 for wherever he represents. So, um, I believe, and that is what the Constitution states, that must be an investigation. It, uh, like I said, you cannot suspend somebody by fiat. You cannot declare a seat vacant by fiat. There must be a process of investigation. And then he must be given an opportunity to defend himself. Until, until that is done, then I, I do not believe that uh, it, it can be justifiably said that the House... Has followed due process, and if you don't follow due process, it is illegal, it is ultra virus, and that is not acceptable under a democracy. It must be given fair trial. I think it should be given fair trial. Yeah, well, one of the things that was said, you know, in in all of this uh, conversation, you know, was uh, how a lot of uh, uh, lawmakers, House of Assembly members, State House of Assembly members, only show up on, in quotes, big days. Uh, maybe when, of course, there is um, a discussion concerning, you know, money or, you know, something similar. Um, they only show up on those days. And that's why you, you know, like you also said, you know, a, a person can attend plenary, attend sitting only 43 times in three years, which is shameful, um, according well, to the Imo State House of Assembly. So I want you to quickly talk about the quality of uh, lawmakers that we really have in state houses of, 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 of assembly across the country. Um, you know, what really do they do and in what ways do they really represent the people of uh, those constituencies? And if we're being honest, are the people of Ngokpala going to miss out on anything um, now that he has been suspended? Now, the, it is, his constituents will have to interrogate the fact that since he has been lawmaker, what impact has he made in his constituency? So it is for them to answer that question. And the thing is, like I said, there is this discipline among either the executive, the, judi uh, the parliament, the, the legislature, and the, and the judiciary. Are you aware? This type of law has to be, I, I, I think this type of law also has to apply to, to the judiciary. You know that the, you, you set a court date, the litigants are there in court, and then the, the, for one reason or the other, it has happened before. I, I'm a human rights activist. We have organizations that we, we undo issues of human rights and the rest of that. You get to court and then somebody is in jail who is suffering that you are looking for a way to get him out of the place. You know, the, 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 the judge, the magistrate will not come. They may say, you know, they may say his car broke down. Uh, they may say uh, he yeah, is attending a meeting. They may say he's attending a conference. How do you attend a conference on the day that the, the destiny, the life of someone is, is, is at stake? You know, so uh, nobody, nobody questions the, 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 the judges to the best of my knowledge. You, 
uh, as a litigant, you cannot even query him. That, I mean, you can go to court twice, three times, four times, and then the, the judge is not, they say he's not on seat, and that is the end of the matter. I, that kind of thing infuriates me. We have to be, look, you are working, you are working in, with, with, in, the, in the television house. If you, if you, if, even if you come late to work, there, there is penalty. What are the people that hold the destiny of the, of the whole country in their own hands? There is no, uh, there, there, there is no sanction, there is no, uh, uh, there's no way a, a, a litigant or somebody who's affected in the court of law can probably sue the judge for not sitting on the day that probably is looking for a bail or that is the, the, the case about his uh, life will be determined. The governors, the, the executive, the, the indiscipline is across the board. And that there must be stringent laws about people who are absent from work. If you are playing a role, whether you're executive, whether you are legislator, whether you are judiciary, if you are playing a role, with your duty, there must be stringent punishment and sanction against people like that. And somebody must execute it. You understand me? So let us leave that sentiment aside. People are not seeing the impact of good governance. We are not seeing the dividend of the so-called democracy. Most of the, our lawmakers represent only themselves. Look at what happened at the National Assembly recently about the uh, amendment act to the electoral to the uh, amendment bill to the electoral act. You know, in, in the, that is why I advocate for a parliamentary system of government where the president, by fire by force, the prime minister will come to the house to defend every action of his, every policy of his, every statement of his. You will debate. It's not the situation whereby our president ran away from debate when they were uh, doing the election. Right. He cannot. In Great Britain, the prime minister confr is confronted by the representative of the people every day. Uh, Mark Adebayo, I know we're costing it down, but I'd just like to chip this in. Usually, I know that we always put arguments whether the system of governance that we're practicing is the same or the type of constitution. But shouldn't we, because where you have a situation where the persons who should, these things don't work in space. They're operated by human beings, and these are laws. So mm. what happens when these persons don't respect the law? So be it parliamentary system, be it presidential system, the question now would be the players. And what if they do not obey? Because I'm sure that in the parliamentary system, if the president does not heed to it, there are consequences. I mean, there are actions that should be taken against the president. But do we follow it? So if you have a system where, I mean, there are laws, it doesn't mean that, you know, on both sides, you don't have laws, you don't have measures to call people to accountability. But in the case where those who should do it are not working, what happens? So mostly it might not necessarily be about, you know, having, um, you know, the kind of government, but the people uh, involved in playing it and the system that they have created over time. All right. It is a, it is a, systemic, uh, it is a systemic issue. And it's also a societal malaise. I think Nigerians are too tolerant of bad governance and irresponsible people who are governing us. I think we are too tolerant, you understand? So uh, I, I think the people, we must rise up. And that is part of the failure of the civil society that are not mobilizing the people enough in terms of consciousness and awareness of their rights under the law so that we'll be able to, to hold to account the people who represent us. You know, we, we should be able to hold to account. As a matter of fact, I mean, the people must monitor their representatives at both the national and state houses of assembly to see what to know what they are doing, what are they contributing in terms of the uh, lawmaking and in terms of representing their interests at the various houses of assembly. I believe that it is the collective responsibility of the citizens. It is part of our duty. It is part of our civic responsibilities to ensure that we monitor those who govern us. I don't think we are doing that. All right. And it is the fault of the civil society community. All right, Mr. Devayo, thank you very much. Uh, we have to wrap up here. Thank you so much for your time this morning. And uh, we hope that no, these conversations continue and con uh, we, you know, citizens continue to learn also. Have a very interesting day ahead. Thank you. Uh, you too. Continue. All right. We move away from Imo State and now we're uh, moving to the Federal Capital Territory to talk about security uh, as the Nigerian Immigration Service has placed a very, very shocking warning to residents of the FCT. We'll be back.